Not long after starting a new game in Rise of the Ronin, you'll have a bunch of mechanics thrown at you through tutorials and opening boss fights. But despite being shown so much of what you can and can't do, there's also a lot that the game leaves for you to work out on your own. If you want to learn how to travel through the world faster, or you want some help managing Team Ninja's overwhelming inventory system, then this is the video for you. Here are 13 things that Rise of the Ronin doesn't tell you. When you're creating your character, you'll need to choose your Blade Sharpening Origin. This is essentially your beginning class, and it will determine which skills you start with, as well as how your statistics are distributed. Each class has weapons that they perform better with, as well as a unique starting skill, but don't stress too much about these perks. You'll have plenty of opportunities to try out new weapons as you play more, and the skills that each class starts with can be easily obtained by any other character after earning just a few skill points. You can easily build your character into a different specialization as you go forward if you choose to. Each weapon starts with a default set of attacks and martial skills, but as you progress, you will learn different combat styles for the same weapons. These new styles completely change how your character attacks, and it can feel almost like you're wielding an entirely new weapon. If you want to review how a new weapon style attacks, or what the new style's martial skills are, go to the Combat Style tab and press triangle to view each individual move. Once you've played the opening levels of the game, you'll be set free to explore the open world. There are plenty of things for you to see and do, but we'd recommend that you focus on a couple of key areas to begin with. North of your starting location is a small village on the main path that's been occupied by thugs. Clear the enemies out, and the villagers will return during a time-lapse cutscene. After this cutscene plays, there should be a body laying in front of you that you can loot. Interact with it to pick up a horse flute, which will essentially give you access to a horse for free. If you miss this item early, you'll have to buy a horse later if you want to use one. Okay, you just got your new horse flute, but how do you use this thing? Many key items, like this flute, or a pocket watch that lets you change the time of day, are buried in the inventory screen. To find them in the menus, you need to go to the Equipment tab, then press L3 to open the inventory screen. Here you'll find materials, consumable items, and key items, and you can use all of these from this menu. You'll want to check this menu every time you find a treatise, as using these items gives you different types of skill points. You can also set many of these items as shortcuts on your D-pad in the Equipment tab. You can have up to 12 equipped items at once through the use of three D-pad profiles. You can swap through these profiles while in the menu with the triangle button, and you can switch between these profiles in-game by holding R1 and pressing the D-pad to the left or right. We suggest you keep your most used items in your first loadout, like healing items, your horse flute, and maybe the detector that you can find later on that lets you see through walls. Then the second and third loadouts can be reserved for more situational items, like weapon enhancement consumables, or things you only occasionally use, like Ryoma's pocket watch that we mentioned earlier. There's another piece of essential kit that you can completely miss if you go in the wrong direction early. Follow the main path until you start the mission called Curtain Falls, Curtain Rises. Here, you'll join forces with Ryoma to attack a group of thieves in a compound on top of a hill. Once you defeat the leader, if you decide to kill him during the cutscene, you won't be told where to find the best loot in the whole mission. Down from the pagoda and to the left is a small storehouse. Inside are a few knickknacks and items, as well as a glider. And look, a handy perch for you to test it out from. You can earn the glider a few missions later if you missed it here, but finding it earlier this way allows you to enter Yokohama with style. Once you unlock different fighting styles within the same weapons, you'll see that some enemies have blue or red indicators next to their health bars. You'll want to use weapon styles that align with the blue arrows next to the enemy's health, but it can be hard to figure out which stance you need to use while you're in the middle of combat. If you hold down R1 while locked onto an enemy though, you'll see the same arrow indicators on top of the stance icons, 
which can allow you to change to exactly the right stance after a short glance at the menu. The best way to traverse dense cities and urban areas like Yokohama is by air. There are a few towers scattered throughout the city, which are great as launch points, but you can also leap into the skies another way. Look for ways to get onto the rooftops. Sometimes you can just climb up manually, and other times there are convenient grappling hook points for you to make use of. Once you're up off the streets, look for hoops protruding from the rooftops. You can use these hoops with your grappling hook to seamlessly launch yourself into the air and start gliding with a burst of speed. Flying like this will help you move more directly to where you are travelling, and you can even chain together more hoop launches while in mid-flight if you find another hoop nearby. After you do the mission for Taka, where you fix a broken camera prototype, return to the inventor Igashichi. If you found yourself a couple of foreign books, you should be able to purchase new types of equipment, like the detector and the fire pipe. Activating these will start a new quest called A Lucky Find Put to Use, where you'll learn the basics of how to use each tool. They're both useful, and you might miss them, as well as Igashichi's other very valuable upgrades if you do not return to see him again. So, don't wait. Get these new pieces of equipment as soon as you can. By aiming at enemies with a ranged weapon, you'll see their health and combat difficulty icons. You can use this information when arriving in a new area to determine which of your weapon combat styles will be most effective against certain units before jumping into the fight. These markers above their heads will also stay visible temporarily, allowing you to track enemies through walls from far away. The tooltip that discusses your attributes mentions that you can increase strength from defeating fugitives, dex from training, charm from finding cats, and intelligence from completing photography quests. But that's not entirely accurate. Completing these tasks only unlocks the ability for you to purchase more treatises from specific rewards vendors, and you'll still need silver coins to buy each one. So try to spend them carefully and prioritize your preferred attributes. You can also earn special skill points from treatises found from other methods, as well as by increasing your karma rank at Veiled Edge banners. The momentum you get while gliding is excellent, but coming to a dead stop once you hit the ground is a bit of a bummer. It turns out though that you can call for your horse with the horse whistle while gliding. After you use the whistle, your horse will appear underneath you just in time as you reach the ground. You can let your glide end automatically by touching the ground, or you can close your wings midair by running out of key or by pressing the jump button. This should help you keep your speed once you get closer to the ground, and look cool while doing it. Just don't close your wings while you're too high up in the air. Your horse is only so fast. You get a lot of loot in Rise of the Ronin, so if you get sick of scrolling through your inventory to check for new equipment, and you just want to remove all the unseen dots, press the touchpad while in the inventory menu and select Check All. This removes the new item marker for all items in that category. And those are the things that we found that the game doesn't really explain to you. For more Rise of the Ronin, check out our review, or this guide for mastering the game's combat. You can also find our ever-evolving wiki for more guides, walkthroughs, collectible trackers, and interactive maps. For all other things gaming, stick with IGN.